Welcome to the first lecture of Unit 2. In this lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the basic principles that underlying the buying borrowing process and, and things to keep in mind throughout the rest of this unit. So first, let's remember what do we mean when we say borrowing. And when we say borrowing, we're referring back to our financial planning life cycle. We're saying we're going to take a chunk of money from our future and pull it forward into our present, right? That's borrowing. It's taking money so we have less money in the future, so we're going to have more money now, increase our standard of living now, and maximize our overall lifetime satisfaction. Now, there's a few things or situations where it makes sense to borrow. And the first is when you're investing in human capital. Now, if you recall, human capital is your knowledge, skills, and abilities. So when do you think it might make sense to consider borrowing for human capital? Education, right? Going to school, student loans. That can make sense in a lot of cases because for most people, the financial benefits of education outweigh the cost of the interest. And so for most students, even with increased education costs that we have today, it's still a good investment. And it's okay to borrow some in order to invest in human capital. You need to make very large purchases, such as a house or a car. For example, let's say you want to buy a house, but you don't want to borrow. You're totally against borrowing. You think borrowing is bad, and you don't want to do it. Well, if you wanted to, say, buy a $200,000 house without a mortgage, without borrowing, you'd have to save $1,500 a month for 10 years in order to have $200,000 saved up for your house. 10 years. That's 10 years that you have to find a way to live on $1,500 a month less. Now, not very many people have $1,500 a month to spare. Pretty much the only way that most people can do that is living rent-free somewhere, and for a lot of people, that means living with their parents. And so I like to think of it this way. Am I willing to pay all the interest on the mortgage? And it would be a lot. It would be $200,000, $250,000 in interest on a $200,000 loan. That's a lot of money. But I have to ask myself, okay, that's a big cost, yes, but am I getting a large benefit? The answer is yes. I'm getting 10 years where I can live in my own home, with my own family, I don't have to live with my parents, or find some super cheap place to live, right? I That's 10 years of my life that's really good. And so, yes, there's a large cost, but there's also a large benefit. And that's okay, right? We're comparing our cost to our benefit. That's the heart of all financial decisions, right? But this analysis, this 10 years, has excluded something. That's how long you'd have to save to get to wind up with $200,000 in your bank account. But what's happened in the past 10 years to the price of the house? It's gone up, right? Probably has. So if you factor in uh, inflation in the price of houses, it actually would save you closer to 15 years to take to save up $200,000 for a house. And so when you weigh, all right, 15 years of my life in a home that's my own versus this large chunk of interest, is that worth it to me? And for some people, the answer will be yes. For some people, the answer will be no. Okay, but what we're going to walk through in this unit is calculating that cost and then thinking through what's the intangible benefit. What is that 10 or 15 years? What is that worth to me? What is that worth? <clears throat> Another case when it makes sense to borrow is to smooth out small bumps. Okay, So this is when we use a credit card so we can keep maintain a consistent level of spending month to month despite inconsistent income or inconsistent other expenses. For example, let's say your water heater in your home goes out. You know, it will cost you a couple thousand dollars to get a new water heater installed. Now, you could pay for that with a credit card. Get the water, water heater replaced with a credit card. And that will cost you interest. And credit cards charge a high interest rate. So if you, say, put it on a credit card and pay it off over a year, you'll probably spend an extra two or $300 on interest. Now, that's not that great, right? And while I don't, I don't want to spend an extra two or, three, two or $300, and that's why an emergency fund can be so helpful. It can save you a lot of money. But if you have no other way to pay for the water heater, no other way to fix it, then that two or $300 in interest against, say, the six months it might take you to save up to be able to pay for a new water heater, that's six months of cold water or $200. Am I willing to pay $200 in interest on the credit card to have six months of hot water? 
Again, that only comes out if you don't have an emergency fund. Right? If you have no liquid assets on hand to cover that, then a credit card can be helpful for that. Remember to always evaluate both the costs and the benefits of any decision when you're going to borrow. Right? Your total cost is going to be the purchase price plus the finance charges, just like we talked about in Unit 1. The purchase price is usually not hard to figure out, and throughout this unit, we're going to tell you how to calculate the financing charges. In unit 1, I just told you the finance charges, because I wanted to get you into the mindset of thinking about finance charges as a thing. Now we're going to focus on how do I calculate those finance charges. Again, though, just like in Unit 1, the biggest difficulty is valuing the intangible benefits. What is 10 years worth? What is 15 years worth? Interest is not a waste. I hear a lot of people say this. Oh, I'm not going to waste my money on interest. Don't want to waste money paying interest. Right? We don't want to pay interest for things. And that's an understandable sentiment. Yeah, it makes sense. But it's not a waste in the sense that you don't get nothing for it. You do get something for interest. What do you get? You get time. You get time. And time is your most limited and valuable resource. Debt lets you trade money for time. And there are times when that makes sense, like when you're going to college. Right? How long would you have to work and save up to be able to pay cash for your college education? Five years? Eight years? Ten years? A long time, probably, for most of us, right? The value of that time is very high. And so borrowing to get that time back can be worthwhile. In our example of the house, it was 10 to 15 years, depending on how quickly the, house, the price of the house you want to buy goes up. What is 10 to 15 years worth? How much interest are you willing to pay to get that much time? That's what interest buys you. And in the water heater example, I said, well, maybe six months it would take you to save up to replace your water heater. Is $200 worth six months worth of time? Now, if you're careful and you're storing up your liquid assets, you can get by without using debt. It's entirely possible. But it may not be the most efficient way to go. Because remember, yes, we are paying money for our debt, but what is our objective? Right? You should always keep in mind that credit is going to reduce your total wealth. You're going to have to pay finance charges, interest, and other charges. Every time you use credit, that's going to happen. So, yes, credit is going to reduce your total wealth. But remember, what's our objective? Are we maximizing our wealth? Is that what we're trying to do? No right? What we're trying to do is maximize our satisfaction, our utility, our happiness from money. Get the most from our money that we can. And so having a little bit less wealth as a result of paying interest may not be inherently bad. It may not be good either. What we're going to do in this unit is walk you through how to determine the cost. How much interest will I pay? And then help you start seeing the time. How much time will I save? Is it worth paying X number of dollars to get that much time? And that's going to depend on you and your circumstances, whether or not that cost is worth the time. Is it worth paying X number of dollars to save X number of months or years? Now, there are some things that it's probably really just not worth buying some time for, right? So you could, um, you could Put a new pair of shoes on a credit card and pay it off over three years. You can do that. But was that really necessary? Like, we'll stop and evaluate the benefit, right? How long would I have to save up to buy this pair of shoes? Most of the shoes that I buy, I don't have to save up at all. Or maybe like a month. Like, I don't happen to have 50 or or $100 to spare this month. So I'll try to set some aside. You know, maybe, maybe a month or two, maybe. Now, there are shoes that you probably have to save up a couple of years for, right? Now, if that's the shoe you want and it's worth it to you and you understand the cost, then go ahead and buy it. But you need to understand what it's costing you to decide if it's worth it to you to pay that much. And that's one of the problems we get into when we use our credit cards and other forms of debt. We set up habits that we're going to live a certain lifestyle. We're going to have a certain number of things. We're going to have you know, designer clothes or fancy cars or whatever we like to spend our money on, we get into the habit of spending that 
that much money to maintain that certain lifestyle. But that can be hard to break. Good habits can give you great results, but bad habits, the habit of spending more than you're earning consistently, can be a very hard habit to break. And we lose sight of, am I, how much time am I getting? Right? We, we don't think about that. We just are in the habit. We're spending without thinking. And when we spend without thinking, we spend more than we need to, and things cost more than we realize. One of the areas where people lose money that they don't realize they're losing money is in this hidden interest. They just look at the monthly payment and say, oh, I can afford the monthly payment, but they don't realize all the costs that are in the background that they're, that they're losing out on. And so when you're doing the math in this unit, you're going to see examples of that, where money is slipping away, hidden in the background. Now, one last point I want to bring up is that you can't forget about risk. Anytime you borrow, you are taking on risk. Because remember, we're taking future income and spending it today. Well, that assumes that you have future income, right? If I borrow half a million dollars for a really nice house, that assumes, depends on, my income in the future. And income is never 100% certain, ever. Never 100% certain. And so, every time you borrow, you have to think, okay, if I lose my job, how will that affect my ability to pay this debt? If my spouse loses their job, if I'm injured or disabled, right? And so you have to factor that into your decision. This is what people often forget to do when they are borrowing for school. They assume that they're going to make more money, and so they borrow a lot of money to go to school, but they haven't factored in that they may not wind up making as much money as they thought they would, because it's uncertain, it's still in the future. So don't forget about that risk. The more you borrow, the more risk you take. Again, it's not necessarily bad to take a little bit of risk, but you don't want to take a lot of risk. And if you're going to take risk, you need to do it for a good reason. Just like if you're going to pay interest, you should pay interest for a good reason, to get the time that you want or need that will make your life that much better. So debt is a really powerful and effective tool. Okay? Very, very useful, but it can also be dangerous. Uh, some people like to use the analogy of fire. What's fire's greatest advantage? It's hot, right? We can use it to cook food, we can use it to drive cars, we can use it to blast rocket ships into space. All of that is done in some way or other with the heat from fire. So that's what's so great about fire. What's the problem with fire? It's hot, right? If it gets out of control, if we're not careful with it, it can destroy so much and so many things. And so Debt is very similar to that. It can be extremely powerful and can benefit your life and your financial situation incredibly. But if you're not careful with it, if you're thoughtless with it, or casual, or you don't even understand what you're doing, then you can hurt yourself tremendously. And so in this unit, we're going to talk about how to figure out what it will cost you, when it makes sense to use it, and help you walk through to be in, make sure that when you use credit and borrow in the future, that you do so safely in a way that maximizes your lifetime satisfaction.